We are in week 15, which is actually championship week of the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty, and this is going to kind of be a little bizarre. This um, In NCAA 14, they have this week where in the last week you got all the teams who don't have conference championship games playing, uh, when in reality it's kind of supposed to be during the same week as the conference championship games. But I'm going to go ahead and film at least part of this episode uh, before we advance to the conference championship game so that we can look at the top stories uh, because obviously those, you know, when you advance past week 15 into the conference championship, you lose a lot of the top stories and everything kind of becomes about the, you know, the championship games. So with all that said, let's look at our top stories from last week. Still high. Buckeyes are confident after a Big Ten victory over Michigan. We thought this might be the year where Michigan get a win over Ohio State, but the Buckeyes win. 37-28, Ohio State wins over Michigan. And so Ohio State, um, with a big win, Michigan will still go to the Big Ten Championship with our, you know an outside chance of getting into the college football playoff, but Ohio State wins the big game. Trojans in shock. Will USC be able to jump back after suffering a major conference setback? We saw this in the scores last week and during the game as UCLA with a 14-point fourth quarter upsets the Trojans. USC drops all the way down to number 16. And next top story, Oklahoma rolls this time against big 12 opponent oklahoma state the big rivalry game there as oklahoma wins 52 to 31 big win for the sooners over oklahoma state in the bedlam rivalry tigers are humble crimson tide shocked the tigers in rivalry upset alabama kind of regroups they you know they had a terrible start to the season they got things pulled back together they end up winning seven games they started off with a 24 to 7 halftime lead Auburn tried to make a game out of it, but the Crimson Tide wins 41 to 35. Big win for Alabama there as they wrap up their regular season. So close. Miami couldn't keep the opportunistic Panthers from the upset. Pittsburgh still, no doubt, riding the coattails of some of those Casey Clawson recruits when he was with the Panthers. And uh, Pitt over Miami 34 to 28. And who with a better than expected defense? The Buffaloes climbed to the number five spot. We regrouped from that loss to Oregon State, of course, last week with a nail biter win over Utah. You see these last three, four games, really, they've been very close. And we'll see if Colorado can kind of regain the magic of earlier in the season as we go into the Pac 12 championship. Near disaster, North Carolina triumphs over Duke in an ACC riot as UNC with a. Uh, they held on for a 35-28 win over their rivals, Duke. Duke, meanwhile, loses 10 games in the 2025 season. Cruise control. Purdue gets clobbered in conference play by Wisconsin, 45-13. Big win there for Wisconsin as the Badgers move to 7-5. As we'll look at now, the top 25. Excuse me. Oklahoma is number one. They are the by far the best team in the country, at least offensively. Defense 93 is not great, but it's probably good enough to um, you know win games with that high-powered offense that they have. Texas, meanwhile, is number two. Clemson, number three. Texas A&M is now number four. We are number five. Number six is Oregon. Number seven, Michigan. Number eight, Nebraska. Number nine, Arkansas. And number 10, Washington after the win on the Apple Cup there. Arkansas, meanwhile, beat LSU in that rivalry affair. Penn State is number 11 after a win at Indiana. Miami falls to Pitt, so they drop down to number 12. Cal slides up to number 13 despite not playing. Notre Dame beats Stanford in the final regular season game. They are now number 14. South Florida with a 20-14 win at arch rival Central Florida. USC, after that loss to UCLA, plummets from 5-16. to 16. Navy with a 16-6 win over Temple. They're 9-2. They're ranked number 17. Auburn fell to Bama, so they are now number 18. Cincinnati moves up to number 19 after beating Houston. Ohio State back in the top 25 after that win over Michigan. And Tennessee with a 33-27 overtime win over Vanderbilt is number 21. 22 is Virginia after uh, winning that matchup against Virginia Tech in their rivalry game. South Carolina, meanwhile, falls to Clemson, so they drop down to number 23. Pitt comes back into the top 25 after their win against Miami. And BYU being stunned by Del Tulsa. At one point, BYU is in the top 10. So they kind of fell apart at the end of the season. Let's look. I don't know why I'm interested, but that's... Yeah, they lost three out of five. Cincinnati, South Florida, and Tulsa. Cincinnati and South Florida are understandable losses, but losing to Tulsa, that's, uh, that's a bad loss for that team. 
So BYU drops all the way down to number 25. As so we draw near to the end of the season, let's look at the Heisman watch. Of course, Derek Romero still leads. What an epic season he's had. 34,000, sorry, 3,400 yards passing. Uh, 42 touchdowns to only four picks. Unbelievable. Rushing, he's added 640 yards rushing. So he doesn't run a whole lot, but enough to really add to his numbers. He's probably pushing close to 4,000. Yeah, he's over 4,000 yards of total offense. Uh, is Derek Romero, probably easily the best quarterback in the country, at the very least. Um, real quick look at the conference standings. Uh, Colorado, of course, we won the Pac-12 South. Our opponent is going to be Cal in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. Uh, a rematch there. Would have been interesting to have gotten to play Oregon. I don't think we played Oregon this season, did we? No, we did not. So, um, Oregon, though, they they, are, they lost to Cal. Had they beaten Cal, they would, they would have gotten into the Pac-12 championship. So, they have no one but themselves to blame. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it here and then advance to the the championship week so we can kind of get a look at our uh, Pac-12 championship opponent, California, and do a little preview there. We'll look around the country at all the conference championship games. And so here we are in conference championship week against Cal. Cal comes in ranked number 13. They're 9-3 and three overall, 7-2 in the Pac-12. Of course, we are 11-1. 8-1 in the Pac-12, and we'll look at them in just a moment. Let's real quick, though, look at the Army-Navy result. Of course, that is a, um, a big-time game in the college football world. You know, it often has very little ramifications on, on anything, uh, but uh, Navy does win 38-21, to so the midshipmen move to 10-2. and They get 10 wins uh, in the 2025 season. Uh, big season for them. And now let's talk about Cal. Um, well, first of all, let's look at the uh, games this week, right? the conference championship games. In the Pac-12, of course, it's Cal and Colorado. Ball State and Bowling Green in the MAC championship. The Big 12, you've got Oklahoma and Nebraska. Coastal Carolina and Louisiana in the Sun Belt championship. Middle Tennessee State and Southern Miss in conference USA title game. Tennessee, meanwhile, <laughs> sneaks into the SEC championship game. And they will take on Auburn. I'm going to come back to them in just a moment because I want to look at something. Uh, Cincinnati with the win over South or takes on South Florida in the American Conference Championship game. In the Mountain West, you've got San Jose with a losing San Jose State with a losing record taking on Air Force. Uh, Virginia in the ACC Championship game will play Clemson. Clemson trying to get in the college football playoff. Iowa will play Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game. And on Tennessee, this is, uh, I've downloaded the most recent version of the college football revamped uh, mod. And they have added the um, just recently, whatever, announced, recently used, actually, this Saturday, they used these, uh, the what uh, UT called the dark mode jerseys with uh, black uh, shirts, black pants, with orange uh, numbers, trim, all that stuff. The helmets are white. Uh, the power T is outlined in black and the middle stripe on the helmet also outlined in black. I've done a little modification though. I really prefer that checkerboard uh, pattern on the pants that they had back in when Butch Jones was here on um, 2000, I guess, 16, 17. Uh, so I've edited the black pants so that it has that checkerboard pattern. Uh, just like I've done that for the orange pants and the white ones as well. Um, I just really like that pattern opposed to the two stripes. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys that as we, you know, the revamp mod team does an unbelievable job. Um, but also I like to you know, kind of put my own little edits in there. So that is uh, a look at around the country as we head into conference championship week. So what about this Cal team? What are they, uh, what are they bringing to the table? We've already, we played them in a tough game. We won 28 to 16. The defense was strong in that game. Um, but Talent-wise, they are the better team, so we got to anticipate them being able to give us a very good game. Uh, points per game, obviously, we're a little ahead of them. Total offense, though, they actually are out in front of us. Obviously, rushing offense, they're way, they have a much better rushing offense. We have probably, yeah, I think, it's that, I think 126 is the worst in the country. Uh, our passing offense, though, is second-ranked in the country. Uh, and defensively, um, 
we they are slightly better in total defense um, but obviously we are pretty good against the rush that's kind of an ncaa football thing though but cal does they hold their own against the rush as well they're the third ranked rush defense in the country uh turnover differential we've got the edge there so let's look at the cal roster so look at the Cal roster. Kevin Williams is their starting quarterback, and their backup is Broderick Noble. Um, but as you can see, there's not much difference between the two. Williams is a little more mobile, which I guess means we have to assume that no Noble's arm is slightly better, although I'm sure that uh, 92 awareness inflates uh, Williams' overall numbers a little bit. Uh, running back Prince, uh, they don't really have a you know a speedy stable of running backs, but they, they're decent, you know, 84, 87, 90, 79, not great. But uh, they'll cause us problems. We don't have a good enough defense to really just assume that we're going to be able to shut running backs down. Uh, they do have a 76 overall true freshman fullback. That's pretty good. That's one of the best fullbacks you're going to see. Uh, and the fact that they're a true freshman means by the time they graduate, they're, they're going to be in the 90s. Um, Receiving core, uh, Porter is their top receiver. He's at 94 overall. There's a pretty big drop-off after him, although Young is fast. He's got good speed, decent acceleration. Porter's not overly fast, but he does get to his top, top speed really quickly with that 99 overall acceleration. Um, he, If they can get him the ball, he is going to cause us problems. Um, I guess you'd call him a possession receiver. But he's a guy that once he gets the ball in his hands, he's going to turn it upfield and make something happen. Tight ends, uh, a couple decent tight ends in Williams and Thompson, 85 and 81 overall. Their offensive line, their starting left tackle is injured. Their backup is actually a center, Nate Goins, um, but he's also better. He's a better lineman, so that's an injury that actually kind of works out for Cal. Their left guard is an 85, center is a 93, right guard a 90, and the right tackle is an 84. This is one of the better lines that we're going to be facing. Defensive end, Rutledge is an 87 on the left. On the right, you've got Buchanan, 84. They're backed up by an 83 and 82. So they've got decent depth uh, on the edge on the defensive line. Up the middle, they're also strong with Watson in 87, Johnson in 84. And then the third string, I don't know why their third stringer is third string when he has a better overall than the second stringer, but uh, coaching decisions, right? What can you say? Um, but they have a, obviously have a decent and relatively deep defensive uh, tackle uh, depth chart left outside linebacker 89 he's got 89 speed this is a, a 99 acceleration Ron Peoples is a he causes problems uh, the middle linebackers are not as strong uh, on the other side though Ray Scott is a 90 also has good speed and good acceleration so their linebackers on the outside are going to be tough. Cornerbacks, uh, Harris is a 90 overall. You do start to see a drop off after him, but uh, these they're obviously going to match up well against our receivers, and they did in the first game, especially when we got into the second half. It really became difficult for us to find space. Free safety is a 76. That's where he, you know he's a true freshman. So he's a talented true freshman. You look at his uh, just these first statistics here, their attributes. 93, 93, 91. Um, by the time he's a senior, he is going to be one of the top uh, secondary players in the Pac-12, if not the country. Meanwhile, strong safety is a senior, the redshirt senior. He's a 94 overall. Not great speed, but again, good acceleration. Um, so they, they're, they're capable in the secondary. Um, meanwhile, special teams, kicker is an 80. So that's, you know, not great. A little sketchy, but probably solid uh, their punter meanwhile is a 96 overall so he's going to be able to uh, create good field position uh, or give us field position issues so that's a look at cal this is a big game this is uh, a game that can decide if we have any chance whatsoever of getting into the college football playoff um, so we're going to have to be ready play well to win and we will go ahead and go into the game and see how things turn out so here we go. It is time for the 2025 Pac-12 championship game. And as you can see, you've got number 13 Cal, 93-72 in the Pac-12 against number 5 Colorado, 11-1, 8-1 in the Pac-12. This is it. Big time matchup. Colorado just outside the college football playoff right now. A win today could get them in. And a loss means we'll have to wait and see what we can do next year as we look at the stats here. Cal, we've played them before. We know what to expect from them. They are a very good team. Uh, we did win thanks to our de defense, but the offense is going to have to be more productive today if we're going to have a chance. As we look at our top players, 
Running back Alston, Palmer, and Hodges. Although our quarterback, Brown, is not on there. I'm not sure what the deal is there. He should be. But in any case, that is our top players for Cal. You've got Harris, Brown, Williams, the cornerback center, and tight end. Injury report, we have none. G. Simon, their left tackle, has a torn pectoral, but he is probable, so he'll likely see the field today. So let's get to the stadium and see how this thing turns out. So we are here, ready to see Colorado try and win the Pac-12. This, I'm pretty sure, even going with the dynasty, would be the first time Colorado has ever won the Pac-12. Uh, never been able to pull that off before. So we look at the offensive ranks. Obviously, Colorado is a passing team, but Cal, they are no pushover in, in the passing game. Uh, they also have a top 25 rush offense, so they're very balanced. They're going to be a challenge. They actually have more passing touchdowns than the Buffaloes. So uh, that will kind of whatever, give you kind of look at what we're looking at as we see Cal take the field. The Bears, one of the top teams in uh, the Pac-12. Obviously, they've had a great season. The last couple of years, they've kind of been hovering right on the cusp of, of elitehood. Uh, be, they've gotten close uh, to making some noise for a possible college football playoff appearance, but they always seem to lose a game or two that uh, they shouldn't, and it ends up knocking them out of the running. But here is a chance for them. They won't get in the college football playoff, but they can bring home the Pac-12 title. Colorado, they've got some big goals and that are still able to be accomplished if they can win here today at Folsom Field. Second and 10. Two backs this time for Brown. He's in a little trouble, but he gets it away, and that is complete. That's Freddie Herman, the Buffalo's top receiver, who picks up 14 yards, and he'll have a first down. So from the 29, Brown with three receivers to his right. He'll take the snap. Cal gets a man through the line, but the pass is away and complete. That's Kenny Williams with a 14-yard reception. That'll be a first down for the Buffaloes down inside the red zone. Second six, Brown to throw. To the right, that's complete across the middle, and that is a touchdown. Ray Webb and the Buffaloes drive right down the field on the first drive of the game. Brown completes 9 of 10 for 58 yards, only works out to about 6 yards a pass, but uh, end result is successful. Colorado takes a 6 to nothing lead and punches Cal right in the mouth on the first drive. And we look at the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma all over Nebraska, 51-27. to The Sooners look like they're easily coasting into the college football playoff. Of course, Romero, look at that, 22-27, of 27, 386 yards, five touchdowns. Yeah, he's got to be able to win the Heisman. We look around the country. Uh, South Florida looks like they've won the American over Cincinnati, 42-39. Southern Miss over Mitsu in the uh, Conference USA championship game. And in Atlanta, Auburn has won the SEC over Tennessee, 31-17. What a mess the SEC was this year. <clears throat> and handoff again around the left side. Again, he finds room. Big run here as he gets across midfield. That's Josh Prince with a 23-yard carry. Second and six, and fake handoff. Williams keeps it, and now he pitches, and it goes to Prince. I think that's Prince, who will take the ball down to the 11. Yeah, 16 yards. Williams now with a bunch to the right. He drops the throw. Across the middle into the end zone, and it is complete to Ryan Edwards for a touchdown. And, folks, we have the makings of a shootout here in the early going. Both teams drive right down the field and score. And we're about to have a 7-7 game. We'll see if Colorado can answer. Brown having a great start. He's 11 of 12 right now. Second down and six. Cal looks like they only rushed two. And a throw in the corner route. That is complete. There is a flag. There is a flag. Cal's coach not happy with the call right now. Third down and six. Brown takes the snap. Cal blitzes. Brown gets it away. Just missed his target, so we'll be fourth down. Colorado probably going to attempt a field goal here. And this is for the lead. The kick is good. Colorado goes up 10-7 to on Cal here in the Pac-12 championship game with that field goal. So Kenny Williams comes under center. He's got a tight end to his left, two receivers to his right. He brings that tight end from left to right. And play action. He's in trouble. He's dropped. Sacked. Kenny Williams is sacked. 
by Travis Keith. That his that's his first TFL of the game, and he drops Williams. That'll make it second down and sixteen. Big play by the Colorado defense there on first down. Third and sixteen. Williams to throw. Moving around in the pocket. Throws it long. Oh, he had a man, but he couldn't hang on. That will make it fourth down. Big stop for Colorado. And Welsh gets it up to about the... Oh, fumble. And Cal recovers. Welsh fumbles the punt. And Cal now with the ball on Colorado's side of the field. So Colorado... Trying to make life as hard as they can here down on the goal line. But that is the end of the first quarter as the Buffaloes have a 10-7 to lead with Cal driving deep into Buffalo territory. Colorado had a chance to really take control of the game, but Welsh fumbled the punt right there and Cal was able to recover. So from the gun here, Williams takes his tight end from left to right. Fourth down and one. Williams to throw. Throws to his left man wide open. Easily trots into the end zone. William Edwards, touchdown, and Cal on, I think it's the second play of the second quarter, takes the lead 13-10 with the extra point on the way. So now the Buffaloes playing from behind for the first time today, trailing 14 to 10. Here's the handoff to Hodge up the middle. Ooh, nice run. He picks up 12 on the carry. Third and 12 from their own 32. Brown takes the snap. Looks to throw. He goes long. He's got a man behind the secondary. That's complete. That's Freddie Herman to the 15, 10, 5. He is brought down at the one yard line. First and goal for the Buffaloes. What a play. Brown just kind of running a crossing route. Gets in behind the secondary. Sorry, Herman. Brown finds him. Lays the ball out perfectly. And now Herman has the Buffalo offense set up first and inches from the goal line. Big play there for the Buffaloes. Kind of a heavy set here for Colorado. First and goal. Handoff. This is Palmer. He finds a hole. Or Alston. He finds a hole. Finds the end zone. And Colorado in two plays is in the end zone. After getting, uh, after losing some ground, getting to third and twelve, Colorado, boom, boom, and they now have the lead. The Big Ten title game is now underway, and Iowa leads number seven, Michigan, seven to nothing in the second quarter. First and ten, Williams in the pistol. Handoff again to Prince around the right side this time. And the ball's loose. Colorado jumps on it. Cal had quite the drive going. They were gashing the Colorado defense, but the Buffaloes force a turnover. And they're going to give the ball back to Brown and the Buffalo offense. It looked like, the, it looked like Cal was just going to run right over Colorado until that fumble. First and 10 from the 29. Brown here to throw. He goes long to the right. He's got a man. That's Herman again. This time just a go route. Running the four verts. Trying to hit Cal after a mistake. Big play there. And Colorado is already again in business. This game is going to be very back and forth. Last game against Cal was low scoring. This looks like it might be the opposite. Buffalo offense here now and in the red zone at the 21-yard line. Brown's got two receivers to each side. He's going to throw. And across the middle, that's complete to Webb. Picks up 13 yards. It'll be first and goal at about the 7. And this time his tight end is in the slot to the right. He brings him in motion. Brown. Play action. Cross the middle. That's complete to the tight end. That's Larry Johnson getting the ball into the end zone from 8 yards out. Colorado now takes a 23-14 lead. With the extra point, they'll move that lead to double digits and put the Bears down by two scores. Can either of these defenses get a stop? From the gun this time, Williams to throw for the first down. Out to his left, he's got a man out there, and it is complete. There is a flag also. Fourth and one, under center, is Williams. 
He's going to hand it off, and Prince is going to get there. He got three yards. That is enough for the first down. Cal keeps the drive alive. Third down and four. Williams with an empty backfield. Five receivers. And Colorado sends the blitz, but Williams got it away and got it complete. That will be a touchdown to Robert Young. 26 yards. Robert Young got behind his man and makes the catch. And Cal back to within one score here. Single digits. The extra point will make it a three-point game. And Iowa still leads Michigan. It's 14-7 to now. They approach halftime. First and 10 for the Colorado offense near midfield. Brown to throw. He's got Johnson again on the corner route. 19 yards on that catch. And now the Buffaloes are into Cal territory, down and close to the 35. One thing Coach Clawson and Colorado would probably like to try to do is make sure they don't leave too much time on the clock after this drive. Brown rolls to his left, throws it. Ooh, nice catch. Ray Webb gets his feet down. Brown rolls to his left. It's kind of an in and out route, and Webb gets his feet down. That is a Colorado first down in the red zone. Second and five. Brown takes the snap. Throws it into the end zone. He's got a man. That's Mike Smith. 13 yards for the touchdown. And Colorado back up on top by two scores. The extra point will make it 10. And we have a new school career passing touchdown record. Steven Montez's record falls. Mike Brown takes over with 65. And it is halftime. Colorado, this is a game where both teams, uh, their the offense has been high-powered so far. The final score of the first game uh, in the regular season was 28-16. to Right now, you've got a 31-21 to virtual shootout as Colorado came right out, first drive of the game, drives right down the field. It was a, it was a methodical drive, 10 uh, Brown threw 10 passes. And the Buffaloes took a 7-0 lead. Cal answers right away as uh, Prince runs through the Colorado offense. They tie the game at 7, and it's been back and forth ever since. Colorado has managed, though, to nose out to a 10-point lead. And as you see the numbers here, clearly Colorado's passing game is unstoppable right now. Cal, as we knew, they have a balanced attack, and it has been very successful. The big difference was the turnovers. Uh, Colorado had fumbled a punt. Cal also, they've, or I have Prince fumbled. And so they, and then the clock ran out on their last drive or else who knows how that would have went as neither, both defenses are struggling to figure out how to contain these two offenses. We'll see if that keeps up in the second half. If it does, we're not going to be in for quite the finish. Cal does get the ball coming out of the half, out of halftime, gives them a chance to get themselves back into the game. And we'll also see if Colorado is able to make any adjustments on D to slow down this bear offense enough to hang on to the lead. Empty backfield here for Williams. He'll take the snap, throws it to his right. That's complete. But Eric Williams steps out four yards short of the first down. We'll see if Cal punts. Third and one. Receiver comes in motion. Brown hands it off up the middle. Hodge, huge hole, big run from John Hodge. He'll get 17 yards, and that is enough for a Colorado first down. He gets to 55 yards on his seventh carry. Brown now from the 29. Quick screen to the right. That's complete. That is Webb. 
any case, it's a first down. Quick screen. Whoever caught it turns it. Yeah, Ray Webb turns it upfield, gets the first down. Colorado, second and goal here from the six. Brown takes a snap. He rolls to his left, lets it go. Touchdown, Colorado. Ray Webb in the back of the end zone. All alone, Brown finds him, gets him the pill, and Colorado will now take a three-score lead after the extra point. Webb, easy catch, easy throw, easy catch. Well-designed play, Buffalo's big lead. We look at Mark Brown's numbers here. Obviously, just a phenomenal game. He is he is just about single-handedly taking the Buffaloes to the championship. Here, Williams got a bunch to the right. He makes a little adjustment, and he's going to fake the handoff, throw it long across the middle, and that pass is intercepted. That is catastrophe. Cal is now seeing the Pac-12 championship slip away. What little hope that they had left might have just fallen into the hands of Lucas Hill, the free safety. He says, I'll take that. I know where to go with that. And Colorado now, three-score lead with the ball on Cal's half of the field. Third down and four. Brown brings Herman in motion. Oh, Cal sent everybody. And that left Larry Johnson wide open in the middle of the field. Brown, just in time, gets the pass. It looked like they were blitzing eight. Larry Johnson all alone, just as he gets hit. Brown gets it to Johnson, and Johnson... Big gain, first down, into the Cal red zone. Third and 12, Brown takes the snap, rolls to his right a little bit. He's in some trouble, and he is sacked. Cal gets a very important stop here. The touchdown would have really, really put Cal in big trouble. Now, at least, it's still only going to be three scores if the field goal is made. So this will be about a 37-yarder. Hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. And Clemson wins the ACC championship. They'll be joining Oklahoma in the college football playoff. They beat Virginia 35-21. to Big win for the Tigers there as they represent the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, move going forward with a chance to win the national title. Colorado defense is as uh, much as they struggled early on, they've kind of got things sort of under control now. So third and long, Williams, three receivers, two to his left, one to his right. He's going to throw, and he's going long to the left. He's got a man, but the Colorado defender, Ben Hodges, knocks it away. It'll be fourth down for Cal. So from the 46, Brown takes the snap, quick screen to the left. That is complete. And Ray Webb picks up eight after shoving away a defender. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Colorado now well in control of the game. They have a 20-point lead. They have the ball. They're on Cal's side of the field. And they are now 15 minutes away from the Pac-12 championship. Brown at the 11. He will throw. He's in some trouble. But he gets a pass a complete across the middle. That's a touchdown to Ray Webb. 13-yard pass. And Colorado now will go up 47 to 21. At one point, this was a three point game. Colorado, it was 24 21. And we look at the Pacific Live game summary. Colorado, well in control at this point. So Kenny Williams here out of the pistol. Cal trailing by 27. Pass is complete. Nice little throw. Looked like uh, Williams, the tight end, had kind of a delay route. Williams to throw. And now he's going to run for it. He's got some room. He's going to have the first down, but he fumbles. But Cal recovers it, though. Matt Williams falls on it. Third and seven. They need the eight-yard line. Tight end in motion left to right. Williams. He's going to drop the throw. Swings it out to the right. Got a man out there. It's complete. And the receiver pushes his way through. So he gets, shoves the defender off. Cameron Cole gets the ball into the end zone. And Cal now, with the extra point, it'll be a 20-point game. First down and 10 now at the Cal 40. Brown will give this one to Alston up the middle. Alston, big run. Colorado now up to 81 yards rushing. Olsen 51 on eight carries. 
Colorado here from the 17. Brown hands this off again. This time, Alston leveled. He'll lose a yard. Fourth down. Colorado, though, at this point, just trying to get to the end of the game. So this will be about a 35-yard field goal. This will be the third kick for a third field goal attempt for Colorado. The kick is up, and he got it. 51-28. to 28. Colorado with a 23-point lead now. Makes It is going to make it more difficult for Cal to get back into this game. So on fourth down. They can get a first down if they get to the five or to the six. Williams sloughs it into the end zone. He had a man out there, but just overthrew him. Colorado will take over, and that is probably all she wrote, folks. Cal maybe had a little sliver of hope had they been able to score there, but now Colorado will take it over and will begin running out the clock. And that is the end of the game. So in what was quite the offensive showcase today, didn't wasn't re- we weren't really quite sure what to expect. We knew these offenses were capable of a game like this, but when they met her during the regular season, both teams struggled to move the ball. And today they were both very explosive. Mark Brown, what a game he had. Just he was absolutely efficient. Uh, I mean, just laser-like accuracy. And he uh, just about single-handedly shredded the Cal defense. Winning today, 51-28. Colorado will now hoist the Pac-12 Conference Championship, uh, the championship trophy, uh, here at home at Folsom Field. Next year, we'll be moving it to Las Vegas. But look at that. Brown, 39-45, 440 yards, five touchdowns. Easily, easily his best game of the season. And here we see the Pac-12 Championship trophy. Casey Clawson. Host, hoisting it into the air. The Buffalo fans going crazy as they watch their team win the Pac-12 championship. Tough game for Kenny Williams. Looked like things might go well for him early on as he found Young there on the touchdown pass. Uh, this game was at one point 24-21, nearing the end of the first half. Colorado was able to get a touchdown to push the lead to 10 going into the locker room. And Cal could not do anything with the ball coming out. Uh, actually, through I believe they were through a turnover, through an interception, that Cal, uh, Colorado was able to turn into points, and the Buffaloes just coast to a win. Second half, outscoring Cal, uh, Cal in the second half, I believe it was 20 to seven. Uh, never really felt threatened, uh, at least not in the second half. And Colorado now, we'll see what the uh, what the pollsters think if this was impressive enough win to get them into the college football playoff. So look at the uh, team stats. Obviously, you know, big. Uh, both teams had a good day. Like 20 first downs for Cal. That's nothing. You know, it's nothing to sneeze at. They had uh, 168 yards on the ground, and 27 of 37 passing for 216 yards isn't bad either. They had four touchdowns. Um, the big, obviously, the big thing that probably sunk Cal was the turnovers. Uh, Colorado had one. They fumbled the punt when they could have pushed their lead out to 10 early on. They were at 10 to seven, Welsh fumbles the ball. Cal is able to then take that and go, and go up 14 to 10. Uh, Colorado, again, with chance to really sort of, you know, uh, take control. They failed, but the Cal turnovers were also pretty devastating, and that made it very difficult for the Bears to overcome. And when you look at third down conversions, that's another important stat right there. Colorado, by not getting behind the, the chains too often, uh, they were able to go 9 of 12 on third down, and that's obviously 75%. Cal, 6 of 13 is not bad, especially if you can go 2 of 3 on, on fourth down. But when your opponent is getting it 3 of 4, it's going to make it tough. Uh, if you look at the red zone statistics, uh, Colorado won that. The turnover, 2 to 1 turnover ratio was a big difference because Cal, had they not committed any turnovers, who knows? Maybe you throw another couple touchdowns in there, and this is a whole different game. But they, the turnovers were costly for Cal. And they spent most of the game looking up at the Buffaloes. So we look at the uh, uh, individual stats. Mark Brown, the story of the game, 39 to 45, 440 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, he did get sacked three times, but uh, when, you, when you're when you're throwing the ball, when you're when you're completing 86 percent, it, it's going to be tough to stop you. Uh, Al, uh, Alston, 10 carries, 59 yards. Hodge added 54 yards on eight carries. Uh, Alston also. Uh, had a touchdown rush. Palmer came in, got five carries for 14. Uh, Brown, of course, with his you know the three sacks. Uh, receiving, 
Uh, Freddie Herman, what a game for him. He was quiet towards the end, but six catches for 166 yards. No touchdowns, but he set up Ray Webb for at least one or two of those. Uh, the one touchdown that, or the one big catch where uh, Herman got in behind the secondary. He had a couple like that, actually, and uh, set up the, Cal off- or the Colorado offense uh, to score points. Larry Johnson, the tight end, uh, caught five balls for 61 yards and a touchdown. Mike Smith added a touchdown catch. Um, defensively, Walton led the team with 11 solo tackles, although you had Earl Evans get 10. Good job there by the linebacker core. Uh, TFL's Travis Keith, the right end, had a couple. He also had a sack. We had three sacks. Uh, Johnson, uh, Wesley Welsh, the cornerback, got in there and got a sack on a cornerback blitz. Uh, and Lucas Hill had the one interception where he stepped in and took that ball away. Uh, big play there. It was, that was probably the play of the game. It really kind of uh, ended any chance that Cal had to come back. It was, it was, it was a pivotal moment. While Colorado was in the lead, uh, it sort of snuffed out a Cal drive that could have turned into points. Um, Hodges, Ben Hodges, the cornerback, had a deflection. Uh, they had one fumble, right? Yeah, Johnson and Keith each forced a fumble. Uh, only one of those was recovered. Lucas Hill. Look at Lucas Hill. Ball hawk today. Interception and recovered a fumble. What uh, what a game for him. He was a big part of this Pac-12 championship. So that's the Pac-12 title game. Make sure you tune in next week. We'll look at the Bulls. Uh, we'll look at the college football playoffs. We'll see if Colorado's in. And uh, obviously, hopefully, they are. So make sure you tune in. This is Vault Force 1 signing off. I'll see you guys in the next episode.